Hello, welcome back to Intermediate English Writing. Professor Kent Lee here. How are you doing today? Well, the semester is almost over, isn't it? Nice, huh? All right. Um, first of all, sorry about this thing in my way. I'm trying a new microphone setup today. Don't know if it'll work, but eh, worth a try. Today, we're going to talk about the Chicago Manual of Style again, a different version of the Chicago Manual which is kind of more formal and nicer and I would kind of recommend that you use it in your papers. Now in your papers you can use the Chicago long footnotes where you don't need a work cited uh, just the long the full citation at the footnote at the bottom of your of each page where it's cited. Uh, you can use the short footnote style the Chicago short footnote style uh, where you have short footnotes like author and a brief title and then full information is at the end of the paper in a works cited format. You can use the Chicago author date or parenthetical style which I'm going to talk about today. Um, if you're used to a different style you can use that too. So there's the APA. Some of you might know APA that is used in education and social sciences. Um, for example psychology, language education, sociology, etc. Some areas of linguistics, especially applied linguistics, educational linguistics. There's the MLA, which is used in literature studies. Uh, you can use that if you want to. Um, throughout this talk, I will sometimes um, contrast um, the Chicago author date style with these other styles. Uh, so you, you can use whatever format you're used to. Now, some of you might be from other departments and other majors where you use a different system, and that's fine too. Again, I have done proofreading work for professors from other departments. I'm used to the styles that are used in science, engineering, medicine, etc., law, uh, and such. So any style you want to use is fine as long as you use it properly and you include the full information for each source. And it looks like you're doing it more or less properly and consistently. So today I'm going to talk about the more formal Chicago author date style or the Chicago parenthetical style. And that's because in the text of your paper, you have the author and the date, at least in parentheses, usually in parentheses. Now, uh, sometimes you can mention the author in the sentence and you have the date in parentheses, uh, whatever. And then at the end of the paper, you have a full works cited format. And the works cited format looks a little bit different for this version of the Chicago style than it does for the other versions of Chicago that I talked about earlier. Yeah, it's weird. I know it's a little inconsistent, and that's um, the Chicago style is really versatile. It's flexible. You can use it for citing a, effectively a lot of different kinds of sources, but it's confusing because there are so many different versions of it, and there are so many strange differences between like how you do work cited if you're using author date, um, the author date system versus the short footnote system, and I don't know why that is, but just. Um, as long as it looks like Chicago style or some kind of proper style, I'm fine with that. So uh, let's uh, dig into Chicago style. So I'm going to use an actual paper that I wrote a few years ago. I, and this is a paper that was published in a research journal some years ago. I wrote it with a co-author, a colleague at Korea University. In, the, in my next lecture, I'll go through this a little bit more, um, the uh, contents of this paper to show you how sources are used in the text, but to, right now I'm just going to show you the Chicago style. So let me start on page 716 here, uh, because here I've got like your most typical examples of what Chicago looks like in the body of the essay in the text. So we see here, for example, Lee 2010. It's not me, it's some other Lee. Uh, so name, the, the family name. So always, of course, in any citation system, use the family names or last names. Now, if you happen to have, let's say, Korean authors, let's say you have two different Lees who published in 2010, you could go Lee, comma, in the first initial, like Lee, comma, A, if their first name starts with A. Um, but here, there's just only one Lee for 2010 in my sources, so Lee 2010. Uh, so the citation comes after the information. Uh, in the sentence. That's kind of commonplace. Uh, as long as it's clear that, you know, this sentence here, the information in this sentence is paraphrased and based on Lee 2010. Okay, next, so that's your very typical Chicago 
style. Notice there's no comma between the last name and the year. This is Chicago style. Now in APA, they would have a comma. Uh, so the in-text citations sort of look like APA citations, but in Chicago, there's no, there's no comma between the last name and the year. Let's go to the next one. We have noon in 2003, 594. Now 594 is a page number. So the interesting thing about Chicago style is if the information that you're citing really comes from one page or a range of pages, um, you would put that. Uh, it's kind of optional because like up above Lee 2010, the information is really drawn from the whole article. I'm kind of summarizing the the meats or the substance of the entire article, the Lee 2010. But here, Noonan, here I'm citing maybe specific information that comes from one particular page. And that's so that somebody can look it up. They want to look it up. Okay, where in Noonan's article is that? It's page 594. That's a page number. So year, comma, page number. Uh, so, uh, and that would be especially important if you're citing a direct quotation. Uh, if you're reproducing a table or chart from somebody's work, you should put the page number. Uh, but again, don't do lazy quotations whenever possible. Summarize information instead of direct quotations. Direct quotations are only used if the actual quote itself is somehow cool, um, interesting, memorable, memorable, important, if, if the exact words are somehow important. Otherwise, whenever possible, summarize, paraphrase it. And you can cite the page number in Chicago style. And uh, let me go down to uh, another paragraph. So here we have Bench, Benish, 1996, um, semicolon. And then, so I can cite two sources in, you know, the same parentheses. So, of course, the Chicago author date style is also called the Chicago parenthetical style because the information is in parentheses, not a footnote. And I can cite two sources because I'm talking about information that comes from two different sources, the Banesh 96 and the Ferris 98, separated with a semicolon. Now, let me go down here and show you uh, another example. I've got a couple of author, two different sources cited. Um, Bandura 1993, comma 2001. So I'm citing two different sources by Bandura. His 93 article and his 2001 article, and then another guy, Pajares 1996, semicolon. Uh, so I'm citing them in Chicago in terms of order of importance, the Bandura 93, 2001. So same author, Bandura 93, 2001. So it's in chronological order, the Bandura 1993 article, and then the 2001 article by Bandura, um, and then, uh, of secondary or lesser importance is the Pajares article, 1996. Now, let me go down further and show you. Uh, where Chicago is going to differ from other systems a bit. Here I've got one source, I've got two authors, Oxford and Shearing. So two authors on one source, Oxford and Shearing. So I've written out and. Now in other styles like APA, other systems, instead of if it's in parentheses instead of and, I would use the ampersand, the and symbol on your keyboard. It's called the ampersand. Uh, it's a Latin name for the and symbol. But in Chicago, you write out and Oxford and Shear in 1994, semicolon, Dernier 2014. So notice I cited these in order of importance, for, of order of importance, uh, Oxford and then Dernier, because the Oxford Shearing source was kind of more important, and then the Dernier was of secondary importance. Now, in other systems, particularly in APA, it would be different. Um, you would have a semicolon, of course, between the two different sources, but you would put these in alphabetical order according to the the first author. So in APA, I would have to put Dernier first, begins with a D, Dernier, and then the second source would be the Oxford and Shearing starts with an O, the last name of the first author of a paper with multiple authors. So in APA and other systems, I would go Dernier, 2014, semicolon, Oxford and Shearing, 1994, uh, in APA. And APA would have commas, too. So notice um, how this is different. Yeah, these are little differences, but let's say if you're going on for studies in graduate school, a master's or a PhD program, 
uh, universities and professors care a lot about this and if you're trying to publish your papers in academic journals they make a big deal out of these little things it has to be exactly in the right format uh, me I'm a bit flexible um, as long as it looks like you're using one system consistently just be consistent okay now let me go to um, let me see page 715 uh, second paragraph here some other examples notice I've got so for two authors if it's an article by two authors I did like Oxford and Shearing now if it's three or more authors in Chicago I just abbreviated with this at all beyond at all 2011 comma page 432 at all is a Latin abbreviation it means and others it's sort of like etc where etc is Latin for and other things other similar things and at all is at alia other different things or people different people so that abbreviates for Bian and several other people so use at all now in APA it's a little different the first time you cite an article um, even if it's three or more authors you might put all of them in the first syntax citation and then later when you cite it again you can shorten it to Bian et al. so if I writing APA I would put Bian and all the other last names of all the other authors on this article uh, and then the second time I started the, cited this in my paper I could then shorten it to Bian et al. Now let me come down here to this. Uh, by the way, in the PDF, the years are kind of in bluish purple. That's because the uh, journalist putting in kind of hyperlinks. You can click and go to the works cited where these are. Don't worry about that. Okay, down here I've got Sheen 2009A. So this means I've cited at least two different papers by the same person named Sheen uh, from the same year, 2009. A, and then later in my paper I've got Sheen 2009B. Two different papers, the same author or authors, exact same author or authors in the exact same year. So I'll just do 2009A, 2009B. The same kind of holds true for other systems. If it's MLA or APA, uh, you would also do this 2009A, 2009B, and it's going to correspond to the entry in the works cited. Uh, so uh, let's go to the works cited or references so it might be called references it might be called works cited so let's just look at the first one uh, we have um, Airy John so this is important the uh, references or works cited you can call it works cited more often it's called works cited in papers using Chicago style they will be in alphabetical order uh, according to the family name or last name of the first author so it needs to be family name first or last name first at least for the first author so the first one Airy comma John so get the names right John is a first name don't cite John in the paper please that happens every semester I say to students please yes yeah, cite their family name or their last name don't cite John no, it's airy at all here so you've got airy comma John then now in Chicago and MLA the first name uh, if you've got multiple authors a uh, work by multiple authors the first name is going to be last name first so last name comma first name airy comma John and then the rest of the names can be in normal order Karen M Lordson and a uh, Rasanen, Rasa uh, Linus Salö, and Vera, Vera Schwach. I'm trying to pronounce these correctly. Um, okay, so last name first, at least for the first author. Uh, the rest of the authors can be in normal order. Now, in APA, every single name is family name first. Um, so in APA, this would be Ari, comma, J. So in APA, you first names or personal names are abbreviated which is weird I know uh, Airy comma J comma Lauritsen comma K comma <laughs> it, it looks kind of awkward I know yeah and then you've got the year so notice this is different the work cited in Chicago style for the short footnote style 
is different where in the works cited entry the ref in reference entry the year and stuff is the date's going to be at the end but here it's the second thing after the authors you've got the year um, so this is different if you're using chicago author date parenthetical style it's author names then year um, this is a weird difference and notice it's just the year now in APA style they put the year in parentheses because they want to highlight that they want to make it easier to see because in APA the years in social science research the year is kind of more important because it's kind of more important to have more recent research um, at least a good part of it is more recent research in Chicago Chicago is mainly used for a lot of humanities fields where the date is less important uh, or at least if it's if it's old stuff, it's it's okay. It's more normal in other humanities compared to social science research. Then you've like in then you've got the title of the article in quotation marks. And this is like in APA. Uh, and notice every noun or important word is capitalized. You don't do that in APA, but you do that in Chicago and I think in MLA. In the title of an article. Uh, every um, important word, content word, nouns, verbs, adjectives, uh, and every word that's, uh, was it four, I think more than four letters, um, is capitalized. So little prepositions and function words like of, in, the, those are not capitalized, but longer words like between um, are capitalized. It's called Title case. It's called title case. Case meaning capitalization. Uppercase is capital, lowercase is uh, small letters. So this is called title case and it's used in uh, article titles in Chicago style. And I, it's annoying, I think. Uh, as a linguist, I think it doesn't make any sense, but okay, it's so commonplace in English writing. Uh, so you do title case. Uh, and notice after a colon, um, you've got a colon and then something else in the title. So after colon, it's capitalized after that. Just like you capitalize the first word of a title and you capitalize the first word after colon and such. Uh, the academic journal is higher education. 73 is the volume number. Four is the issue number. So the issue number, so let's volume 73. Those are like the issues that are published in one particular year. Multiple issues. So the issue number is four. If you don't have the issue number, you can leave it out. That means it's like maybe there. this is published four times a year. And this is the fourth issue of that year or that volume. The volume corresponds to roughly one year of publications. Page number is one to six. Now you see a DOI number. Don't worry about that. Uh, you don't have to put that in my papers, but other professors might want that, especially if you are in graduate school. Uh, so you can leave out DOIs, you don't need it for papers in my class. But what it is, is this. Um, these are academic research papers that are on the website of an academic publisher, like a publishing company, an academic publishing company that publishes a journal called Higher Education for research into academic research into issues of higher education. Now, an academic journal might sometimes reorganize the websites and links might change. So a DOI is like a permanent identifier. It's a permanent link to that particular article, to the PDF file. So even if they change the website, reorganize things, a DOI is going to be like a permanent uh, uh, reference. You can type it directly into your browser, actually. You can copy and paste it or just click on the link here because the links are um, inserted here. In the PDF file and it'll always take you to that article uh, no matter what okay uh, next we have actually an article from a book uh, it's an article a research article that appears as a collection of research articles in a book so you've got the title of the article here in quotes and then it's in pass to the professor professoriate that's the title of the book edited by so-and-so so you may not come across this uh, you may not be using such sources, but if you do, that's how they are done. It's a, it's a book that's a collection of new research articles by different authors, and there's an editor that puts it together. Editors and the page numbers, 3 to 16. And then for books, you've got the location of the publisher, San Francisco, California, colon, Jossie Bass, that's the name of the publisher. Okay, um, so... Um, down here we see Bandura 1993, Bandura 2001. So these are listed 
Uh, multiple works by the same author are listed in chronological chronological order, 1993 and then 2001. Okay, then let's. Oh, there's the Byun, um, Byun comma Kyung, and then the rest of the names: Min Jung Chu, Min Jung Kim, Min Park, Su Hong Kim, Un Chu Young Jung. A lot of authors there, so they're all listed here in the text. We saw Byung at all. And here they're all spelled out. Here the Xin, Xin Zheng Chou, 2009A, building. Xin Zheng Chou, 2009B, classifying. Two articles by the same author, same year. They're put in alphabetical order by the title. Building, classifying. Um, so, so this is going to be A because it's first alphabetically. And you're going to cite it in the paper as 2009A. And the next one is... 2009B. Um, and then one other thing, uh, von Hoene, Linda, Dutch names. Um, actually, that's a preposition in Dutch, so technically it would, you should put it uh, under H's in, yeah, in the way you alphabetize it in the work cited. But yeah, a lot of software today doesn't recognize Dutch names as, uh, uniquely, uh, and they just put von Hoene, um, even though it's really like it's of von Hoene of Hoene. Um, anyway, uh, and notice also that these are indented, hanging indents. The first line of each entry is indented leftward uh, from the rest of the, the other lines. It makes it easier visually to distinguish the different entries. Instead of putting extra line spacing between entries, we do hanging indent. And that is true for Chicago, APA, MLA and all systems hanging uh, most systems in uh, social sciences and humanities use hanging and dense like that so we're using Chicago we're excited um, APA MLA do hanging and dense like this if you're using a system that's used in science and engineering um, it you may not do hanging and dense at least not quite the same way talk a bit about foreign names um, let's see here. Here we have um, sources written in Korean, but I'm writing the paper. If the paper is written in English, your research paper is in English. Well, if your professor and your or other readers very likely all know Korean, at least the Hangul, you could just do like this. You can quote the original title of the article. And then in square brackets, put a translation. Um, CISA journal is the name of a journal. You don't have to translate that. But if it's like a title of a book, you might have to also do the same thing with a book title or um, such. Um, the book title maybe in Korean and then square brackets, the translation of the title of the book. Uh, and then here we have the second one, uh, title of the article, translation in brackets. Donga um, Science, uh, I think it's a news article. In So in my case, um, if you are citing an article in Korean, you could do it like this. For papers in my class, this would be okay. Uh, for Korean. Uh, in uh, If it's like a German or French article, you just put the title. Uh, so it's another language like German or French or Spanish that uses the Latin alphabet. You could just put the um, title, the original title in quotation marks, and then in square brackets, a translation, an English translation of the title of an article or title of a book. Now, for audiences that don't know the writing system, if you're writing a paper and your professor doesn't know Korean at all, uh, or if it's for an international audience, readers, you would romanize it. Uh, I don't care how you romanize Korean. I'm using linguist in Korean linguistics. They use a system called the Yale romanization, which I think is awful. Um, but uh, so I don't care how you romanize it. Uh, if you're publishing in a linguistics journal or a linguistics class, you would use the Yale romanization for Korean. Um, you can look it up on your own. Uh, I don't care. Just do your best to romanize it. Actually, for my class, you can just have put the title in Hangul, and that's fine. Uh, for other professors or other situations, you would romanize it and then a translation in square brackets. 
If you're citing a source that's in Chinese, please romanize it in pinyin for me. Uh, uh, because I can't read Chinese that well. Okay, um, I think that is all. Oh, so I'll, just, I'll just send you to my to a website where I have some more uh, examples um, how to cite books. I'm a, I, I'll send you to my website. There's a website on the Chicago Manual, the parenthetical version of the Chicago style. Uh, so books for like with one author looks like this. Two or more authors will look like that. Uh, you've got two authors and you could cite it in your paper with or without the page numbers depending on whether the information comes from particular pages more likely with books that's probably a good idea um, so I would cite uh, Paul in 2006 the page numbers Warden and Burns 2007 page number um, again for like um, multiple authors Barnes et al 2010 uh, for other kinds of books, please visit um, this web the web page on Chicago Style, um, including other kinds of books and electronic books, journal articles. Again, um, the in-text citation might look like this: Weinstein, 2009, and page number is optional if information comes from just that page or certain pages in the work cited. It will look like that. Uh, if it's an online journal. Uh, it's only published online. You can put not only the date of the article, uh, but the date it was accessed. Although access date is more often for things that might change. So if it's a research article, maybe that won't change, but it doesn't hurt to put the access date when you last accessed it. Uh, popular periodicals. So um, you might be citing popular or more professional periodicals. Uh, again, you can cite the text like, you know, Mendelssohn, Stolberg, and Pear, like that. Uh, in references or works cited section, it will look like that. Authors, title, uh, publication, or authors, title, access date if it's an online source. Uh, so online articles uh, might look like that, where you uh, have the URL instead of page numbers. Um, so if it's a more formal academic publication, you would have volume issue number and page numbers if it's an online source, strictly an online, if, uh, or actually if it's a popular peer article, you would have maybe not, maybe not volume and issue number. Um, a few might have a volume and issue number, but instead of that, you would have the date uh, for popular peer articles. And if you don't have page numbers, if it's f an online source, you could put the U URL at the end. Uh, if you have no authors, you can put, um, you would cite maybe in the text the a brief title or a shortened title. Uh, and in the work cited, the entry will begin with the title since there's no author, like how to hack into the Pentagon, and the dates, and then the uh, publication. Uh, there are some other kinds of print sources in here. You can look at on your own electronic sources, websites. If you are looking at company websites or s websites of organizations and institutions. Um, so, for example, Google, that's the general company or institution behind the website or the general name of the website, the date uh, or the year, and then the title of the particular page. And either uh, some websites might indicate when they were last modified, a date, and then the URL. Uh, or if not, the whenever you accessed it, the access date. So at the bottom of some pages, some web pages, there's a date that indicates when it was last modified or revised. If not, put the access date. Um, you might have, especially online sources with no authors, again, like um, uh, like this. Um, so. In the paper, you might cite it like, oh, just massive fraud and the date 2019 and the work cited. Um, you've got the, it starts with a title, a date in the publication and date, uh, full date. Uh, and you might have some sources with no dates, especially electronic sources, online sources. Um, so you could cite that in your paper, like Smith, da, 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 indie, indie means no date. And in the, in references, work cited, um, you would put, you know, author, if you have an author, ND for no date, there's no date on it. 
uh, and you put uh, the, as much information as you have about the source here, the title, um, the company or institution behind the website, URL, and then uh, last access date, or last access date in URL, I think. So you can go to that web page, uh, my little Chicago guide, uh, or you can go to the official Chicago website, but I, I think my web page is a little more uh, informative because I've tried to um, put together different kinds of uh, types of stuff you might be citing. All right, uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, so again, just do your best to include full information in your in references. If things are a little bit off, I'm not going to make a big deal out of that. If you make minor mistakes with formatting, such as long as you try to have the full information and try to consistently do one style, whether it's Chicago parenthetical, Chicago footnote, APA, MLA, whatever you like. All right, hope that helps. In the next lecture, I'll go through a bit more, go through the paper and say more about um, use of sources in an actual paper. Till then, see you soon. Bye.